So um, you stress the urgence of uh, capital market union in Eurozone for Europe to stay at the table with uh, world power players, let's say. Do you see it coming straight forward? No, I don't, but, um, and I regret that, but I think there's still time to make this happen. Um, a monetary union can't work without efficient risk transfers, and this has led to a great debate over a quarter of a century about the need for fiscal union and about a need for political union, um, all of which is very difficult for the members of the monetary union. I understand that, but there are some things that could be done. In the American economy, some 70% plus of transfers of risk across this vast American economy are done via the equity markets and the bond markets. And so developing a European Euro-denominated capital market where people in Belgium invest in companies in Calabria and people in Puglia invest in companies in Latvia um, in the way that people in Mississippi invest in companies in Massachusetts and vice versa. This would really help a lot to preserve the monetary union and make it more efficient. And that would help um, Europe standing in the world as an economy. But you see a long way to go still. I, there's, an, there's an opportunity now because the European Commission have proposals for a capital markets union. Um, I think that what I've hardly for me to say, but I think what I've described is very much in the interests of Berlin because there will be risk transfers and there will either be fiscal transfers below the line in the so-called target two system or above the line of politics all through the private markets. And it's in everybody's interests for this to happen in the private markets. Um. Do you fear the recent attacks may undermine the fragile economy, uh, European recovery? It could, yeah. I mean, this, is, this is the most serious set of things that's happening in our continent. Um, massive migration from a war-torn zone, well, it's more than a zone, the Middle East is vast, um, terrorism. Um, and this will make investors around the world a bit more uncertain about prospects in Europe. It will cause them to wait before investing. It might cause people within Europe to save a bit more and businesses locally to wait before investing. So this isn't going to, I don't know how big an effect it will be, but it isn't going to help recovery because it doesn't do anything very positive for confidence. We as a continent will get through it because our values are strong and deep, but it doesn't help in the short run, the economic recovery. Just a quick intake uh, about Great Britain in the European scenario and the world scenario. Uh, what would a Brexit mean for global balances for UK, for Europe? Well, let me start for Europe because the, the adverse scenario for Europe is one where Britain leaves and the monetary union is in difficulty and terrorism continues and we start to look as though the European project is breaking up and under threat, and this will not be good for the economy um, of, the, of this continent, of this part of the, of the world. People in America, where I spend some of my time, definitely want the UK to stay in, and they need the European economy, which is the second biggest in the world, um, to succeed. So the stakes the next few years are extraordinary. And we haven't mentioned the French election. The French election is crucial to all of this. Perhaps the biggest thing going on in our continent. Um, it, it, it is important that whoever is returned there truly believes in the values of democracy and freedom. And um, eventually, um, let's go back to what is the topic of our event. Uh, what role do you foresee for Europe in the world and uh, for Italy in Europe also? In, the, in 40 years? Oh, I'm optimistic over that period. I think we're going to have a tough time um, for the next few years. But um, if you look across our continent, we've got one of the most highly educated workforces um, in the world. We have um, institutions and values that um, run deeply. And this, this will mean that Europe can earn a place at the new top table. By the end of you, you will live to see a world where the top table might be America, 
China, India, maybe Brazil, Mexico, Indonesia, um, maybe not all of those, who knows. But we, we should want Europe um, and Italy and my country, the United Kingdom, and France and Germany to be represented at the top table. We have been a force for good over the past 50 or 60 years since the Second World War, and we can sustain that into this new and exciting world. Um, but it won't come to us on a plate. We will each nationally and then to collectively in the European Union, we will have to earn it, and there's no room for complacency at all.